Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you in another Let's Play episode of Echo Flynn's Path. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> He's serving up the steamed vegetables and the fancy cheese bread, cheese bread fresh from the oven. The bread looks a little burnt around the edges, but maybe it's supposed to be that way. Oh, of course you are. My fingers reflexively squeeze tighter on my phone. Flynn quietly walks around the counter, stepping behind me to look over my shoulder. At first I think he's going to say something, but he doesn't. He's silent. With a sharp exhale, I begin typing my reply. We can, all hang out can we all hang out tomorrow? I've got some interesting stuff for my project at City Hall. Flynn makes a noise, though I can't really tell whether it's, a, it's of encouragement or disapproval. I need to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, I reply. But what about? Leo responds almost instantly. You know exactly what. At this point, I realize Carl is looking over at my screen as well. I'd call him and Flynn both out for being rude, but were this any other time? Hmm. Daxton, meanwhile, just looks at us, just looks at us all with, the expression, with a concerned expression on his face. What's up? Don't worry about it. Carl and Flynn both look at me expectantly as my thumb hovers over the reply button. Does he even respond at this point? I have no clue how he would have found out about Flynn and I, if that truly is what he means. Leo's never really been good at getting his point across through text. He failed many in English class growing up. He always preferred to talk face to face, so maybe if I can be convincing enough in person, he won't be so worried. Or maybe I should just tell him the fucking truth. I hate this. I'm not even sure I did anything really wrong, but I can't help but feel like garbage. And now my pseudo-infidelity lying game is becoming a spectacle. I decide... I decide I might as well respond with at least a somewhat true response now. No... I shove my phone back in my pocket and Flynn steps back. This is so fucking stupid. Carl just looks at Flynn with a flat expression. What? Carl shrugs. Like I said to Chase earlier, man, I won't say anything. Daxton quietly chews on his very crunchy cheese bread, looking at us from the other side of the counter. Uh, drama? Yep. He moves from my side to back over around the kitchen island, grabbing his plate of food and taking a big mouthful of broccoli. You all want to watch some at Astra? <laughs> the salamander smiles awkwardly, gesturing to the small living room area. I'm down. I'm down. Carl holds up his bottle of beer before taking a swig. Chase? Flynn? I sigh. Usually TV is a bit too passive for me when I'm trying to get my mind off stuff, but most often I turn to video games instead. Still, Daxon seems pretty passionate about all this. I guess it can't hurt. Sure, though all I've ever seen of it are a few of the movies, I think. Oh? Well, which ones? Uh, the ones with all the lens flare and chrome? Daxton looks as if a bad, as if a bad taste just settled on his palate. <sighs> the Tell Me Brothers directed those ones. They tried way too hard to be edgy and action-packed. Completely ignored proper characterization. Like Lieutenant Gamora, Lieutenant Gamakra firing the plasma emitter at the, for, at the Fabesian ambassador? She's completely non-violent in the original series. She took a vow of peaceful resolution following the violence cascade that destroyed her homeworld in the first season. But the writers just thought it would look cool for a trailer so they showed her disintegrating a guy while screaming her head off. I really liked the thought-provoking philosophical stuff, not the protagonist running around killing people. Daxton huffs, rubbing his fist against the smooth, his smooth brow. I'm not sure how exactly to respond. Yeah, it's pretty not great when that happens. I like the space battles, though. Of course, they were made to appeal to a casual audience. A blink. Daxton quickly holds up his hands, his eyes widening. Oh, I didn't mean that as an insult or anything. Um, no offense taken. I offer him a reassuring nod, taking a bite of the steamed veggies. They certainly taste fresh. Flynn must have gotten these in Peyton. And Daxon's stuck having to deal with us filthy casuals tonight. Again, sorry, that's not what I meant. No, I know what you mean. You dig it because you grew up with the original shit. You have all sorts of fuzzy feelings about it. I'm actually kind of surprised to hear Flynn chime in. Yeah, I mean, looking back, the original series is pretty dumb and cheesy. But it wasn't for you when you were a kid, or the tidbits who wa- or the, or the tit- or the tit dirts who watched it back in the 60s. Yeah, dude, back when we were kids, Leo's dad would get us all a bunch of random VHS tapes from the thrift shop in Colville every now and then. Look at y'all, water time. Come on, water. Hmm. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> like, really dumb kung fu movies are straight to video slasher flicks. Didn't even matter if they were all rated R. Sometimes on summer nights, we'd gather at Leo's place and watch a bunch of them until almost morning. 
They were all terrible. It was great. I find myself smiling a bit. I almost forgotten about all that. Oh, jeez. Flynn would always get super into them. He would yell at the screen every time the characters did something stupid. Carl chuckles into his paw, grinning toothly at the Gila. Oh, man, you get so butt hurt. You start stomping around and slamming Leo's cabinets until he got in trouble. Flynn looks off to the side. If lizards could blush, I'm almost certain he'd be doing so now. Whenever there was someone with a gun on screen, they never had any trigger discipline and completely held their guns wrong. Every time, every movie, someone was being chased by some killer or whatever. They completely forgot how to run. Oh, yeah, you kept counting on how many times everyone tripped. Get a little notepad with your, tip, your trip tally. Daxton looks absolutely tickled by this revelation about Flynn. That sounds hilarious. I wish I had friends like you guys growing up so I could do that sort of thing. Flynn waves dismissively. It was all right. I remember we could, we could never do it when TJ was around. <laughs> satanic, satanic propaganda and all that, right? Eh, he would have been fine with it if we eased him into it. We could start him off with the, with the Bloodfire Babes of Babylon. Carl nods sagely, sipping at the last bit of his beer before getting up to retrieve another from the fridge. So, Flynn, you wanna... Yeah, maybe. Daxton looks pretty elated. The amphibian's slightly chubby cheeks puffed out some as he grins. I know some I know some really schlocky episodes from the first few seasons of the original series. I'll put those on. Sounds good, dude. Daxton sets his plate down, fast walking to the TV in the living room. After a moment, Carl looks over to me. Nerd alert! Flynn goes to... Flynn goes to slide his now empty plate into the sink, slapping Carl on the back of his head as he passes. Fucking rich coming from your neckbeard ass. Hey! I mean, I mean it endearingly. Across the room, Daxon waves at us. Oh god, yep, that is that Astra. Oh my god. Yep, hey, I think I got it. The internet is kind of slow out here because it's a satellite, but it suffices. Flynn meanders on over, lounging on a love seat on the left side of the living room. His tall stature results in his legs hanging hanging far over the edge, the lizard scratching his exposed chest with a yawn. He cranes his long neck to look back at me and Carl. You two tits gonna sit all the way back there? Hold on, I'm coming. Carl gave me a little nudge, and we follow, and we follow suit, beers and grasp. Looking at Flynn now, I realize that part of me wishes I could, never, I could go over there and lay beside him. More practically, I sit in the recliner in the center of the room while Carl and Dax take the other sofa. Okay, so in this episode, Captain Amicus lands on our planet in the year 1968. He's looking for technology to stop an uprising in the future, but... Dax, shut up. No spoilers, dude! Alright, fine, fine. Yeah, Dax. You fucking nerd. Captain Amicus, the slime women! They're in the engine room! This leaves me no... This leaves me no choice, cadet. Activate self-destruct protocol Baker 1-Niner. But Captain... There's no time to debate. Get to the escape pods. Captain, the test results just came in. They, they aren't slime women. They're cell women. They're multiplying as a result of some sort of cancer-like phenomenon. By God, cadet. This changes everything. Deactivate self-destruct protocol. If these are cells, then our ship is one sick patient. Cadet, flood engineering with radiation pulses at three second intervals. Maximum output. I still don't understand why the cell women have tits. Why are they women in the first place? Or why all the lady officers? Why are the lady officers don't wear pants? Carl takes another glug of his beer. This being his third so far from my count. I said I was going to show you the bad ones, guys. Taxton looks a bit defensive, leaning forward on the edge of his seat. His plump tail wrapped around the armrest. Looks like now water time. God, these awful sound effects. Carl idly chucks a throw pillow at the salamander. I'm not complaining, dude! He laughs a little and Daxon eases, chucking it back at him with a bit more force. Carl takes the blow like a champ, in the regard that he doesn't even react beyond smiling goofily. It's surprising to see Carl comfortable like this around a stranger. I can't help but feel kind of happy he can still come out of his shell every now and then. It's fucking dumb! How does anyone take this shit seriously? They don't. We certainly aren't. <laughs> I glance over toward Flynn, who's digging in his pockets for his phone. He taps the unlock button, squinting at the bright screen. The black and orange scales on his face seem to glow silver and yellow in the light. I find myself leaning forward a little, trying to read the tiny text on the screen. It takes me a moment to realize that Flynn isn't looking at the screen anymore. He's looking at me. He huffs, moving the screen away from my view before beginning to text something. Is it? No, it's not Leo. Flynn stares at his phone some, a sort of expectant expression upon his muzzle.
See, one second, y'all. Hey, I don't mean to be all prying and such, but who's Leo? Jackson seems to be asking me this. My ex. Flynn glances back for a moment, though says nothing. Oh, Leo's a guy? Yes. Cool. Salamander frowns in an acknowledging fashion, nodding his head some before refocusing his attention back to the TV. Captain Amicus is in the midst of being attacked by the slime women. Even with the prosthetics and lighting, I can tell that all the slime women are actually just a bunch of amphibians in green body paint. Flynn's phone vibrates again. He taps at it, clearly not really, not really much of a fast texter. After finishing his text, he hastily shoves the phone back into his pocket. I'm heading out. He pushes himself up from the couch, unruffling his shirt before meandering over toward a bowl in the kitchen to take, get his truck keys. Wait, what? Ah, oh, come on, uh, slithead! Daxton briefly snirks at Carl's turn before seconding. Yeah, this is actually pretty fun. Where are you going? Out. You should get back to the motel before the others start bitching. I feel my face grow hot, my fist starting to clench. Okay, maybe drop the mysterious act, asshole? Flynn just heads off to the front door, swatting his tail against the exit I the kitchen island and flicking me off as he exits. Flynn! He's out the door without further comment, and I can hear the chirping sound from his truck outside as he unlocks it. Fucking moody, right? Think something you think something's up with him? Carl shakes his head. Nah, he's just trying to look cool. It isn't working. Dude, get, dude gets uncomfortable with casual so, casual social stuff, I think. He's 25 years old. This is bullshit. I wish he'd just be straight with me. Daxton snickers, though quickly shakes his head, stifling it. What? If he was being straight with you, you wouldn't be so pissed about this, I think. Straight isn't you two not macking on each other. I get it. I sigh, letting myself sink back into the suede fabric of my chair, it automatically reclining for me the more pressure I put on it. I'm starting to regret Carl finding out about all this. If he didn't know, it wouldn't be much of a... thing. It would have been easier just to pretend it never ever happened in the first place. And I wouldn't have to deal with lying to the guy I loved for the most of my teenage life. I'm gonna hit play again if that's alright. I'm staring at the ceiling now, but I can feel them both looking at me. Go ahead, I'm just gonna close my eyes for a little bit, okay? A little while, okay? Gotcha, dude! Second L, water time. Okay. Last couple minutes, y'all. All right. I'll wake you if something cool. I'll wake you if something cool happens. So we'll wake you in the morning. Gonna get a beer, BRB. I shut my eyes and hear the trademark at Astro music resume. A large paw gently pats my shoulder, followed by an audible, audible hoof clops on the kitchen floor behind me. Oh. Oh, okay then. I stare up at the unmoving ceiling fan above me. In the dark, everything looks all grainy. Seems like the lights are still on, but the dinner is the dimmer is so low they might as well not be. It's be a salamander thing. Speaking of, him and Carl aren't here anymore. I try to recollect how much time has passed since I closed my eyes. It feels like just a minute ago. As I rise to a stand, I feel like I feel kind of sluggish for some reason, like my legs are still asleep. My face feels kind of numb too. I always feel worse after taking naps. I'm not really sure I get the appeal of taking them once a day like my mom does. Moving to the nearby window, I squint at my reflection. Look like hell. Oh man, that's creepy. Holy shit. Yep, that is very creepy. And who sh who shaved off my goatee? I blink. It's still not there. I'm not that heavy of a sleeper, so I would have felt someone doing that. I don't think Carl's that cruel, is he? I turn, peering toward Daxton's room. His door is open and his bed is empty. They left me here? Why? A phone vibrates in my pocket. It's Leo. I'm coming. What? I text him back, though. I, I seem to have caught up a case of the Flynn. My texting dexterity is awful right now. Everyone left. I think I'm alone at Flynn's now? While well, I'm at it, I also send a quick text to Carl and Flynn, asking them where they are. A vibrating noise comes from the kitchen after I send Flynn's message. He must have left it when he was when he went out. When I walk to the kitchen, I see the phone propped up against the key bowl on the island countertop that Flynn swatted earlier. The screen's brightness illuminates everything around it with a picture of my face. It's low resolution, like he cropped and stretched it himself from one of my social media pictures. The photo is from a class trip I took sophomore year to the to the carbur carbur cabins. I'm wearing a hard hat that doesn't fit. 
All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.